Today, the Mercury Marine Destination takes us up to Cree Lake in northern Saskatchewan. Pike may be the most popular species at fly-in lodges and a dream come true when the giants are roaming. But don't forget to check out your other options as well. When the big lake trout feel like you've hooked a dump truck, you may be sold for life on these incredible fighters. And don't forget about the walleye. Often ignored on these trips, target them specifically and it might be one of the highlights of your week. A way to get a better hookup and untouched walleye this week on Fishful Thinking. Fishful Thinking is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Princecraft boats dominate the waters. Revo sunglasses and Ram trucks built to serve. Water conditions are brought to you by Humminbird Fish Finders. Get the big picture. Waters can blow up fast, but you can be more comfortable. Smooth out your ride with smooth moves, shock absorbing seat suspensions. That didn't take too long. Sometimes they fool me so much that felt like a heavy fish and now it's swimming right at the boat, but. Henry, you say from your experience up here, they just swim at the boat sometimes. And sometimes they surprise you, yeah. And then they see the boat and they realize they're way off bottom and they don't like it no more. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think it's gonna be much of nothing, but he's not rolling it anyway. What you got here, buddy? Yeah, nice little fish to start. Yeah. I don't think it needs to go in a net. Not quite. I'll uh, drag him around this way. Nice fish, though. It's a good way to start the morning. Oh, yeah, I don't mind this size of fish uh, occupying us, waiting for bigger. <laughs> yeah. At home, that would be a beautiful fish. That's a great fish here, anyway. Yeah, he's in the be in the teens. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. That's probably those ones out he's got it pinned. And I keep my hook sharp, that's why. <laughs> um, that's a nice fish. Yeah, he's uh a little better than he was acting. Oh, very nice. Great way to start a draw. Uh, anything that's pulling drag, I'll take it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Clicker off. Almost had, I had trouble getting out of the rod holder. <laughs> I have my drag fairly tight. I'll back it off as the fish gets closer to the boat. But I want to get the hooks into the fish. And just keep the steady pressure. It's all you can do. Every night I redo my leaders. I'm using 50 pound test cigar fluorocarbon as my leader. These fish have big teeth. They're heavy. They pull hard. I redo my knots every night. And Henry, I think you'll agree a silky smooth drag is crucial in every fishing situation. Absolutely. I'm gonna back off that a little bit because he's gonna start diving. You get the jerky drags and that's when you start plucking hooks out. These Daiwa Great Lakes rods, the guides on them are solid. I don't have to worry about on a trip like this, the airline's knocking my ceramic inserts out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you agree with that or not. I back my drag off a hair. Yep. Because he's going to start surging here near the boat. Absolutely. Not a lot, just en enough to take away from the hook set. These Daiwa Saltus line counters, once you get a depth, an amount of line out dialed in, then you can just repeat it. It's, the guesswork is out. 
Good call on the color of flatfish here. Yeah, is there the show? Maybe the choice you had this one. <laughs> and I've done something a little different with these hooks. I've 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 actually bent the hooks. Oh, there's a head surge. Bent the hooks in a, a T shape so you get more bite and hopefully hold into these fish. Because a regular treble hook, two are against the body, one's down. I Something I, I learned from a musky buddy of mine you know, when, when these hooks, if you bend them out a little bit, you got more of a bite with the hooks. And they're not scratching the lures all up. And I've also added, you're gonna hear a knot come through my guides, my 50 pound braid to 50 pound cigar. I've got 18 feet because we're scrubbing bottom a lot of the times and braid is horrible on the bottom. And then my leader, and there's a fish. Come on up. Oh, you're not as big as I thought. You're hooked in the side. But you're a nice fish. Yeah. I don't know if he's nettable. It's <laughs> up to you. No, it's gonna make a mess in the net. Yeah, it's gonna make a mess in the net. I'm just getting this out of the way quick. Uh, nice fish though. Yeah. But like I said, the way I bend those hooks, it holds. Solid fish. Yeah, it's nothing nice, wrong with it. Nice healthy lake trout. But it sure felt three times the size hook knot. <laughs> nice, thank you, sir. Well, like I said, line counter, we're gonna get that right back where that was. It's in the right depth. There we go. There we go. Down it goes. Awesome. And this is what I mean by bending the hooks a little bit into a T. You can see on that, that hook is bent so it's basically a T shape. That stops it from rubbing and scratching up your lure with the hook points and dulling your hooks. But also, when it's like that, you've got a lot more of a bite to hook the fish. And like I said, two purposes. Saves the lures from getting ruined and scratching. Like I said, the musky guys do this to save the baits a lot. But you've got so many more points to dig into that fish. But we'll get that back down. And now that we've got the depth dialed in for a good size of fish and where we're marking them down there, we know the lures are getting down there, we'll get it right back in there. Closed captioning is brought to you by Mercury. Power and dependability you can count on. A few years ago, I showed how to fix a broken rod tip with a straight section of a jig hook. And it works like you wouldn't believe. It'll never break in that spot again. But I had a few people asking, what about a thicker part of a rod, like a downrigger rod? It's the same process, just use a little more wire. And the reason I like using epoxy is it fills the void. So I've already mixed up some epoxy and put my wire in the first part. I let it dry. Now, I put a, I'm going to put a little bit of epoxy on the wire here again. A little bit on the piece that I want to fix. You don't need a lot, so you're going to be wiping the excess off anyway. Work it on, straighten it up and wipe the excess off. Let that dry and you'll be able to dab that up with some black nail polish and never even see where the correction happened. It's the straight part of a jig hook that I like. Just take the straight section off of that, cut off the front, cut off just as it starts to bend 
Use as many pieces of wire in there as you need to. The epoxy will fill the void. It'll never break in that spot again. It's a perfect quick fix. Conditions today are brought to you by Revo Sunglasses. See what others don't. Make sure the hooks are in. Yeah, a little bit of dragon bottom, Henry, I did it. Ah, let's see, keep the steady pressure on it. Just make sure you don't give them ever slack line. Steady pressure, let that rod bend. Keep the rod bent. Still 40 feet away. Hug and bottom. And what do we got? A couple of head shakes. Back off the drag of here. I like that. Yeah. Keep going. Trying to go back to the hole. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, you're gonna blow bubbles here soon, I would hope. <laughs> See, there's my little knot in my line. That's, uh, I make sure I've got lots of abrasion proof because braid is horrible on sharp rocks. Everyone thinks because braid is so strong and, and easy to tie, it's, it's, it's horrible on sharp edges when, the, when it's taunt. When it's loose, you feel like you can't cut it with a plier or something like that. You go, this stuff's great. As soon as you put tension to it and touch something sharp to it, it's, it pops. Wow. Okay, I can only reel to my weight. We really wanted to drag bottom, so we changed from the jet diver and weights to just a solid eight ounces. More bubbles. <laughs> I love this. Yeah, there's my weight. You're only eight feet back there, buddy. <laughs> you just don't want to give it up. Nope, not quite yet. Nope. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. Here he comes. Turn, turn, turn. Nope. Hey, I'm here for the fight. I'm not going to rush him. <laughs> no. <laughs> just, uh, he can do whatever he wants. That's when problems happen when you rush these things. They're big, powerful fish. It's a long fish, too. <laughs> And in. <laughs> That's a good that is awesome. <laughs> really pinned? Pardon me? Is he pinned in good? It was uh, towards the, it was decent, but I think he had rolled a few times and it was starting to slip a little bit. Ah. Behave, myself, behave yourself, buddy. I don't want to drop you at all. And I'm going to put him back in the net. Oh my gosh. Look at that. <laughs> that is fabulous. You know, normally I'd get a picture of this. Well, maybe I will. We'll put him in the net and I'll, uh, I'll grab my camera. But look at that. That is awesome. <laughs> okay. Back in the net. You know, put you back in the net just for a second. All right, buddy. Boost you up and grab your tail. Okay. You know what? If you want to go, I'm not holding you back. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, sir. You know what? Great Once job, we dialed man. in some depth, that didn't take too long. We got lots of time yet. Yep. <laughs> Checking that leader. 50 pound cigar fluorocarbon. It's really good, tough stuff. But <clears throat> there's that triangulation of that hook again. I've pulled them back and tipped them up with the pliers. So not only is it not scratching the heck out of my lure and wrecking the finish, 
but it just gives more of a bite on that fish when it takes it. I mean, uh, Adam, one of the co-owners and I last year, we had, we had like an eight pounder up to the side of the boat and I was hoping the fish would spit the lure out because there was a 30 pounder ch chased it at the side of the boat for like two minutes and couldn't get the lure out of the fish's mouth. But that's how well it pins into the fish. It really works real well. But uh, you see crazy things like that up here. It's awesome to see, but uh, enough time wasted. Let's get this back. <laughs> this time I'm actually really targeting the walleye. These, these Freedom Marabous come in a bunch of different colors. The, the set the hook grubs I'm using right now that have bait fuel in them. Instead of the flat side chat I've used before, they actually have grubs. So guys that want to specifically target walleye and not just incidental catches, They've got all kinds, Freedom's got all kinds of different marabou colors. Set the Hook has all kinds of different grubs with the bait fuel in it. Another two over there. <laughs> Another one there. Yeah, they've come over to have some fun. Nice. Awesome. Beautiful. <laughs> that is awesome. Like I said, different color marabous. Set the hook with that bait fuel. They, they do grubs now. There you go. Now. Awesome. Now, let's see where those other ones went. But you can see this one. This time I'm using an actual grub. Complete set the hook with bait fuel in it. And this Freedom Marabou. Nice little orange and brown. All kinds of great colors. All right, let me see if I can find another one here. Little hooks, be careful, light drag. And I'm, I know there's pike in here, but I'm a, oh, oh. <laughs> Look at that walleye. Stay out of the logs. I don't want to horse them too much. We can rip a jig right out of their mouth easy. Here you come, here you come, here you come. Look at that. Good gosh. <laughs> They're liking this orange and brown. A little bit of color for them. Look at this. Would you look at that? <laughs> this is so much fun, Henry. Look at that. People come up here for the pike and the lake trout, but sometimes you gotta stop and smell the flowers. Holy yeah. geez. Poor walleye I've forgotten about. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> look at look at the size of that. Just gorgeous fish. <sighs> I mean, what happened? Straight down. So thick. So thick. All right, I don't think we better move. <laughs> no, thank we'll stay here for a little you. bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good from a little bit I can see. You know, I said it before, a good pair of glasses is worth its weight in gold. It's part of your essential equipment. We're sight fishing some of the walleye coming over to the sides here. We're seeing where they're going, what direction they're going. And into the net. Oh, awesome. A little grub fell off that time. Oh, got him. <laughs> It's okay, it's time for a fresh grub. Oh, it's still on. It's still there, it just twists up a little bit. Look at these, just enormous walleye. And back you go. Fishful Thinking is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Princecraft boats dominate the waters. Daiwa rods and reels. And Ram trucks built to serve.
Tackle for the Lake Trout 50 pound test Seaguar 100% fluorocarbon leaders. Daiwa Saltist line counter reels with 6.1 to 1 gear ratio. Seaguar Threadlock 16 strand high impact braided lines. Daiwa Great Lakes trolling rods with chrome plated stainless steel guides. For the walleye, 20 pound test Seaguar Smackdown performance braided lines. Daiwa Ballistic LT Light and Tough Spinning Reels. Freedom 1 8 ounce Marabou Swing Jig with Changeable Hook. 3 inch grubs with bait fuel by Set the Hook. 100% protection from UV, A, B, and C with Revo sunglasses. And the Mercury 60 horsepower 4 stroke outboard motor. Family owned and operated Cree Lake Lodge a home away from home in Northern Saskatchewan, specializing in trophy lake trout and pike on remote waters. That is awesome. They're feeding all over the place I here. Know, it's great. It was just a matter of time, which one? 